Hi everyone, I'm Maria from Creativity Hero channel and today I'm going to make a layered plywood wall clock with a three ring shape. In my first video, exactly one year ago, I made a simple wall clock and this year I decided to make another, more complex wall clock to celebrate my first anniversary. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. To make this clock I'm using 21mm thick plywood. This is a pretty large and heavy sheet of plywood, so I measured and cut one piece 60 by 40 cm to make the drawing of the clock much easier. Then I started drawing the three ring shape. Initially I drew six rings in total, all with different size with a nice transition between them. Later you'll notice that while cutting I made another seventh layer which will improve the complete look of the clock. Anyway, once I was satisfied with the shape, I took the jigsaw and cut following the outline of the last largest layer. This way I got the final size of the clock, which is around 55 by 35 cm, and this size is most suitable for me. As you can notice, there are some tear outs on the top of the plywood face, but it doesn't matter because the router will clean everything. Now I can move on to revealing all the layers of the plywood with the router. The first layer is already shaped with the jigsaw, which means that I'll start routing out the second one. The total thickness of the plywood is 21mm, so in order to get 3mm high layer, I need to set the cutting depth of the router bit to 18mm. This layer was the slowest and the hardest to route out, due to the fact that it is larger and also I needed to remove 18mm of the plywood with one pass. For the third one, I set the router bit to 15mm cutting depth. As I mentioned earlier, when I thought I was almost done, I realized I needed to create one more layer in order to make all the layers 3mm high. In the beginning, I thought it would be more compelling to make the last smallest layer 6mm high instead of 3, but I was wrong. Now I have 7 layers with 3mm height. There are some imperfections and knots here and there, but I think they actually give a character to the clock. Next I determined the center of the clock mechanism and drilled a hole for the threaded shaft to pass through. Then I positioned the clock mechanism on the back side of the clock and traced the outline. 18mm of the thickness of this opening need to be removed, so that when the clock mechanism is installed, it will stay flush with the surface. In order to be able to insert the router, I enlarged the hole with a Forstner bit. With this hole done, now I can route out the opening with the router. Next I placed the clock mechanism and installed the hands. The goal here is to use the hands to mark the exact points for the clock numbers. When it comes to the numbers, I wanted to draw them close to the edge of the layer in an interesting order and with different size. To engrave the numbers I chose the Dremel rotary tool and inserted the flex shaft with the appropriate engraving bit. I made sure to go deep enough so that when I sand the surface the numbers will be still visible enough. You can find links to the tools that I use in this project in the description below. Here I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Once I'm done engraving the numbers, I can hand sand the surface first with 80 grit sandpaper and then with 180. I want to remove the top layer of the plywood face because it is much brighter than the other layers and I wanted the clock to have a uniform color. But when I removed the layer, a note appeared exactly below the number 12. At first I didn't like it, but later I realized that it actually makes the clock so special and unique. Anyway, I sanded all the layers as well to make them smooth and remove any burnt areas caused from the old router bit. To highlight the numbers, I decided to make them darker. After spending a lot of time thinking, 
I came up with the idea to use color pencil to highlight and darken the numbers. Fortunately, I still had some color pencils that I used in my school days and picked the most suitable brown color. My first thoughts were to burn the wood with a soldering iron. But after a few tests, I realized that my iron is not appropriate for that purpose since the tip doesn't reach high temperature, which is essential for wood burning. I just needed to repeat a few times until I got uniform color. Actually, I was pleasantly surprised when I saw how good this came out. Using color pencil was much easier and faster than wood burning and I think the goal here is achieved. The numbers are visible and have a really nice color. To protect the wood, I sprayed one coat of clear, fast-drying polyurethane. I wanted to keep the natural color of the plywood with all the imperfections on it. Once the spray has dried, I secure the D-ring hanger on the back side. Then I install the clock mechanism and place the hour, the minute and the second hand in order. Finally, I mounted the clock on the wall and I'm done with this project. I think it turned out pretty cool. If you like this project, give me a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe to my channel to never miss another video.